Hey, John from Superbase here, and today we're going to look at adding authentication and authorization to our route handlers in the Next.js app directory. In the last video, we built a simple to-do app, but it looked a little too simple. I couldn't handle looking at it anymore, so I added Tailwind and some basic styling to make it look a little nicer. You can check out the link in the description to configure Tailwind for your own project, but in this one, we're going to focus on all things auth. Let's get into it. So currently we can see a list of our to-dos, we can add a new to-do, and we can click on one of our to-dos to mark it as complete and it disappears. And this logic is handled by a single route handler, which when it receives a get request, will go and fetch all of our to-dos from Superbase. And when it receives a post request, it will go and insert a new to-do. And when it receives a push request, it will go and update an existing to-do to be complete but currently anyone can see anyone else's to-dos. And we probably don't want that. We definitely don't want someone else adding or modifying our to-dos. So let's start by installing the Superbase auth helpers for Next.js. So we can quit our development server here and run npm install or i at superbase slash auth dash helpers dash next.js. And this allows us to configure Superbase auth to store session data in cookies, making it available in all of our server side bits like route handlers. Now we went much more in depth with the next.js auth video. So click that card above if you wanna learn a little bit more about cookies. But now that that's installed, we can run npm run dev again to start our development server. And now we're going to create a new file for our login.tsx component. And then we're going to paste in the code that we built out in that auth video, but it's not that scary. It's just three buttons, one for sign up, one for sign in and one for sign out. And when we click these buttons, they're just calling these functions, which are declared above. And the functions are just calling the corresponding functions in Superbase. So the sign up function is calling superbase.auth.signup and passing through my email and my super secure password and then sign in is calling the sign in with password function and passing through those same credentials and then sign out is signing out our user. Now in the previous video, I mentioned that it's really important to create a single Superbase instance that's shared across all client components. And the best way to do this is to use React context. So let's build this out properly by creating a new file called superbase-context.tsx. And let's start with some boilerplate for a React context provider. So basically this context provider will wrap around the rest of our application. And then anything we pass into the value prop here will be available globally across all of our client components. So let's move all of the Superbase client creation logic from our login.tsx file. So that's all the way from router down to this use effect. And instead we'll do this in our Superbase context provider and we want to share our Superbase client globally. So let's pass that into the value prop of our context provider. And then we can export a custom React hook to make using Superbase really simple. And this check here is just to make sure that we're actually wrapping our application in this provider before using this use Superbase hook. And actually we can show exactly that by refactoring our login component to get a Superbase client by calling our new use superbase hook, which comes in from dot slash superbase dash context. Now we need to render our new login component. And so if we open up page.tsx and come down to just before our h1 here and render login, which comes in from dot slash login. Now, if we close this off, save our file and go back to the browser, we should see that very helpful error. So use Superbase must be used inside Superbase provider. So we can wrap our application with this Superbase provider by going up to our layout.tsx file. And then basically this children prop represents whichever page is currently active. So we want to render our provider inside the body but above the children prop. And that comes in from dot slash superbase dash context. And then we want to render these children inside our superbase provider. Now, if we go back to our browser and refresh, we should see that everything is working again. And we now have these brand new buttons for sign up, sign in and sign out. So just to reiterate, cause we went through a lot there. Anytime we're using a superbase client in a client component. So basically any component that has this use client statement at the top of the file, we just need to make sure we're using our new use superbase hook. And this will ensure we're using the same single Superbase instance across all of our client components. We can also clean up a little bit here and get rid of our unused imports. And we can make sure this is all working by going back to our application and refreshing and then coming over and clicking this sign up button. And this is the email that I got from Superbase to make sure that this is a real email account. And when our user clicks that button, it's going to open up our application again. Only now, if we open up the dev tools and go to the application tab, we can see that under cookies for localhost over port 3000, we now have a Superbase auth token. And if we go back to our Superbase dashboard and go to authentication and then users, 
we can see that our new user has been created. And so now that we have a user, we can associate our to-dos with the user that created them. So let's start by deleting our existing to-dos. And now we can add a new column. We're gonna call this one user underscore ID. We're going to click here to add a foreign key relation. The schema that we want is auth. The table is called users and the column we want to set up that relationship with is ID. So auth.users is a special table managed by Superbase and stores all the information about our users and their sessions. Now, if we click save, that will set up that foreign key relationship. So these two tables are now linked. And if we scroll down, we can set a default value for this column to be auth. Dot UID. And this is a special function that we get from Superbase, which returns the ID for the user trying to perform this action. So in this case, the ID for the user who's trying to create a new to-do. And let's disable allow nullable as each of our to-dos should always belong to a user. Let's click save to add that column. And now we can go get our John users ID by going to authentication and then users, and then clicking here under user ID. And then we can create a new to-do by going to the table editor, clicking our to-dos table, and inserting a new row. We can then paste in our user ID here, and then our title can be implement auth, and click save to add that new to-do. And now if we go back to our application and refresh, we can see everything's still working. So now let's extend our RLS policies to make sure that only the user who created a to-do can select, insert, or update it. So let's go to authentication, and then policies, and then let's edit our select policy and we're gonna change the policy name to authenticated users, can select their to-dos. So we wanna change the target roles to authenticated to make sure that our user is signed in. And then we're going to change our using expression to check that the user underscore ID column that we just added to the table is equal to calling that auth dot UID function that we just used for the default value, which again returns us the ID for the user trying to perform this action. So in this case, the user trying to select this row. And now if we click review and then save policy, and go back to our application and refresh. Oh, damn, it's gone. So why is this? Well, by using the Next.js auth helpers to create our Superbase instance back up in our context provider, we were configuring Superbase auth to use cookies to store our session rather than local storage. But back over in our route handlers, we're using the create client function from Superbase JS. So that means our client components like this login.tsx file is using cookies to store our session when we sign in our user. But our route handler is still using local storage which doesn't exist server side. So basically when we make this request to Superbase, it's saying you're giving me an undefined session, therefore this user isn't authenticated. And so RLS just denies that request. So to configure our route handler to use cookies, we just need to use the create route handler Superbase client. <sighs> That's a long one, but that comes in from our Next.js auth helpers package. And now instead of passing in our URL and a non key here, we need to pass an object which has functions for headers and cookies, which we can import from next slash headers. So let's copy this logic to create our Superbase client across to our post and also our put handler. And now this works to configure this Superbase client to use cookies instead of local storage. However, these headers and cookies functions that we get from Next.js are currently read only. When we make a request for data, Superbase will automatically try to refresh any expired access tokens, but it needs a way to set a new cookie header so that new access token can be used across our application. So for this, we can create a new middleware file. So again, make sure we're in the root of our project, create a new file called middleware. .ts, and then we want to export out an async function for middleware, which takes in a request of type next request. And so this middleware function will run immediately before any route is loaded in our Next.js application. So we can create a new response by calling next response, which comes in from next slash server, and then call the dot next method. We can then create a new Superbase client instance by calling the create middleware Superbase client function, which comes in from our Superbase auth helpers. We then pass this an object with our request and our response. And now we can use our Superbase client to refresh our access token before loading any route by saying await superbase.auth.get session. And so this will give us back our user's session, but it will also refresh an expired session and set a new cookie header before loading the route that we were trying to navigate to. So we can just return our response now. And now any expired sessions will be refreshed 
So back over in our route handler, we can just use those headers and cookies functions that we get from Next.js and not need to worry about expired sessions. And now if we save this file and go back to our application and refresh, we should be seeing our to-dos here. But annoyingly, at the time of recording this video, there is a bug with get requests in route handlers where the cookies are not being correctly piped through. And we can confirm this by calling our cookies function to get our cookies list and then console logging out cookies list dot get all. So this will print out all of the cookies that came across with this get request. And so if we save this file and refresh and then open up the terminal for our dev server, we'll see it's printing out an empty array. So if you're seeing your superbase auth token here, or if your to do's are printing out correctly on the page, ignore this next step. But a quick workaround while this is a bug is by moving this querying logic to our server component that's making a request to this route handler. And so that's our page.tsx. So rather than making this fetch request here, we can replace all of this with our request to Superbase. And rather than creating a route handler Superbase client, we'll be creating a server component Superbase client, which comes in from that auth helpers package. And then we also need to import our headers and cookies functions. So we can just copy that from here and put that at the top of our file. And we can alias that data variable that we get back from Superbase to be to do's. Now we can save page.tsx. Now we can go back to our route handlers and just remove our handler forget. And we can also clean up this unused import while we're here. And now page.tsx is red, which is TypeScript totally helping us out, telling us our to do now has a new column. And so let's add that above. So that's user underscore ID which is a string. We also need to add our user ID to our todo.tsx, which has a declaration for this type. And now TypeScript is still not happy. So we're gonna do a little bit of gymnastics down here and do this as two separate statements. So we get back our data from Superbase. Then we declare a new todos variable and set it to data as a to-do array. And now if we save, we're all green, TypeScript is happy. And this is exactly why you should generate your TypeScript definitions with the Superbase CLI. So check out the link to that video in the description and save yourself a whole bunch of headaches. And now if we go back to our application and refresh, we should finally be seeing our to-dos again. And so now we just need to update our RLS policies for the other two actions. So we've done select, but we need to extend our update and insert policies. So let's edit this update policy and make the name authenticated users can update their to-dos. And again, set the target role to authenticated and update both of these expressions to say the user underscore ID column needs to match our auth.uid function. And we can just copy and paste that into our with check expression and then click review and then save policy. And the same for insert. So only authenticated users can write their to-dos set the target role to authenticated and then update that expression to make sure the user is only trying to insert a new to do where the user underscore ID column is set to their ID. Now let's click review and save policy. And now if we go back to our application and add a new to do for play synthesizers, we'll see that one appear in our list. And if we click it, it will mark it as complete and remove it from our list. And if I were to add another user, so if we go to authentication and then users, and then I'm going to invite Andrew at superbase.com and click invite user. And now we don't need to verify that account. We just need this user ID and we can come across to our table editor and click our to-dos column and then insert a new row on behalf of Andrew. And the title of this one can be build cool svelte stuff. And I'll click save to insert that new to-do. But now if we go back to our application and refresh, we can still only see the incomplete to-dos for John. And now I can click this to-do because we have officially implemented auth. Okay, time to go play some synthesizers. And that's how easy it is to add auth to our Next.js route handlers. If you wanna go a little bit deeper or maybe a little bit slower on the auth side of things, check out the link to the freshly baked auth video in the description. And let us know in the comments if there are any other topics you want us to cover. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on so you can hear when the next one drops. But until then, keep building cool stuff.